हाँ बोलता हूँ तमिलनाडु अगले थ्री वीक्स में International University inviting Mr. Ravi Panchanandan, co-chair Fiki Higher Education Committee and Managing Director and CEO Manipal Global Education Services, inviting Professor Sovik Bhattacharya, co-chair Fiki Higher Education Committee and Vice Chancellor Bits Pilani and Mr. Manam Majumdar, Deputy Secretary General Fiki. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, kindly take your seats and all mobile phones put on to silent mode. The exit, those to be closed, please. Thank you. Put our hands together to welcome our eminent dignitaries on the stage for the inaugural session. <coughs> Thank you. Namaskar and good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, today I have the proud privilege in welcoming our Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. Subhash Sarkar, Honorable Minister of State for Education, Government of India. Our guest of honor, Mr. Sumit Joshi, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, South Asia for Signify Innovations India, formerly Philips Lighting India Limited. Eminent dignitaries on the days, Mr. Sanjeev Mehta, President Fiki and CEO and Managing Director, Hindustan Unilever Limited, HUL, President Unilever South Asia and member Unilever Leadership Executive. Dr. Vidya Yerabdekar, Chair Fiki Higher Education Committee and Pro-Chancellor Symbiosis International University. Mr. Ravi Panchanandan, Co-Chair Fiki Higher Education Committee and the Managing Director and CEO Manipal Global Education Services. Professor Sovik Bhattacharya, Co-Chair Fiki Higher Education Committee and Vice-Chancellor Bits Pilani. Mr. Manam Majumdar, Deputy Secretary General Fiki. Ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to 
welcome our special invitees, senior officials, distinguished dignitaries and delegates, respected members of the press and media, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, a very warm welcome to the inaugural session of the 17th FICI Higher Education Summit 2022, the Global Conference and Exhibition on the theme, Global Destination for Higher Education, Advantage India, which is being organized by FICI in support with the Ministry of Education, Government of India, and Department of Commerce, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. Over the years, the FICI Higher Education Summit has evolved into a thought leadership forum for the global education ecosystem that brings together key stakeholders including policy presence of the Honorable Minister and the eminent dignitaries as a source of inspiration for all of us. I would now like to request Mr. Sanjeev Mehta, President FICI, to kindly do the honors of welcoming and honoring our Honorable Minister with the Green Certificate. certificate is a FICI initiative wherein a grove of 10 trees will be planted in the Sundarbans National Park, West Bengal in the name of the Honorable Minister. A very warm welcome to you sir. Thank you very much indeed. And now ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite Mr. Sanjeev Mehta, President FICI, to begin the proceedings with his welcome address. Mr. Sanjeev Mehta is the CEO and Managing Director, Hindustan Unilever Limited, President Unilever South Asia and Member Unilever Leadership Executive. Was recognized as the Business Leader of the Year by All India Management Association and was conferred the prestigious Economic Times Business Leader of the Year Award. And let's put our hands together to welcome. Thank you. Dr. Subhat Sarkar, Minister of State for Education, Government of India, Sumit, Dr. Vidya, Ravi, Dr. Sovik Bhattacharya, my friend Mana. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and a very warm welcome to all of you all. We are indeed delighted that we have with us Honorable Union Minister of State for Education, Dr. Subhas Sarkar. Sir, we thank you for your leadership in bringing about the much needed transformational reforms in the education sector in India as envisaged in the National Education Policy 2020. Now, it's very apparent and clear that there are several challenges facing us when we talk about education. Our spends on education as a percentage of GDP at about three odd percent is half that of many of the developed countries. Now that's the challenge that we have as a resourced, a scarce country. Indian education system serves over 250 million students. Now just think of it, 250 million students is bigger than the population of most countries. And uh, many of our schools suffer from lack of infrastructure. The balance of students, if it's a term I may coin and use, is against us. 800,000 cumulatively students study abroad, some of the best brains, and they mainly go for postgraduate studies, whereas only about 50,000 students are enrolled in India for undergrad, primarily for undergrad studies. The gross enrollment ratio for higher secondary education is less than 50%, for nearly 50% of the states. And the nominal interest rates for students who want to do higher education is in double digits. Now these are challenges, but we also look at it from a lens of massive opportunities. In the era of knowledge economy, the differentiator is going to be a talent pool, is going to be the knowledge, how we create, how we store, how we use, and how we disseminate knowledge. Now, India is on the cusp of greatness. And coming from industry, I firmly believe that this is not only going to be India's decade, but it will be a decade and beyond. This year, 
we would be perhaps the fastest growing large economy in the world. And we certainly believe that we will be able to cross the chasm that exists between the historical three decades rate of economic growth of about six, six and a half percent to eight and a half, nine percent, which we all aspire for, and what is rightfully required to catapult our country from a developing country to a middle income country. Now, when it comes to education, one of the most critical sectors for us. There are many ways where India Inc. could help education. And if some of them I may highlight. First is help develop student-centric education model which could be based on design thinking, role play based teaching, leadership, digital literacy, creating uh, uh, various learning modules which are right for the new age economy. Modernize learning infrastructure, digital readiness and infra, introduce AI, ML in learning, incorporate AR, VR in learning and technology and in teaching, e-libraries and e-knowledge banks. Bridge the academia industry gaps. Identify the gaps which are required to meet the needs of the industry. Strengthen employable skills. Help shape curriculum for the future. And offer apprenticeship program which is at a very nascent stage in the country. And of course, facilitate the continuous development for teachers in the country. The national education policy is a well-reasoned document that has suggested transformative reforms in the education system to prepare our youth to live in a complex and a multi-dimensional global society. It conveys a clear bias for a disruptive change and takes into cognizance the issues of equitability, inclusivity, accessibility, exploratory and experiential. FICI over the last decade and a half has been providing specific recommendations on various important aspects of regulation, quality benchmarking, research, internationalization and funding. We will be very happy, sir, to join hands with the government in working towards developing effective implementation framework for the national education policy. The FICI EY has articulated a report, Higher Education in India Vision for 2047, which will be released by the Honorable Minister today, while attempting to address the key structural and implementation challenges of higher education. The report has looked at opportunities and suggested recommendations for creating an equitable, inclusive and a globally competitive education system. It has reaffirmed the student centricity model, the focus on research, the development of faculty, the mobility, international mobility and digital learning as the critical elements that could radically transform the landscape of Indian education, the higher education in the future. The two days conference will witness important deliberations which will help us develop recommendations for presenting it to the Honourable Minister and the Government of India and I once again welcome you to this very important summit. Enjoy yourselves, keep learning and thank you for your presence today. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for those warm words of welcome and also highlighting Fiki's contribution towards higher education. Ladies and gentlemen, in the last one and a half decades, Fiki has become a thought leader in higher education and has contributed immensely by submitting several thought-provoking knowledge papers. And I now have the privilege in inviting Dr. Vidya Yerovdekar, Chair Fiki Higher Education Committee and Pro-Chancellor Symbiosis International University to come kindly present the theme address. Let's once again put our hands together to welcome ma'am. Respected uh, Dr. Subhash Sarkarji, the Minister of State for Education, Government of India, Mr. Sanjeev Mehta, the President of FIKI, Mr. Sumit Zoshi, 
the Vice uh, uh, President and MD of South Asia for Signify Innovations India Limited, my colleagues and co-chairs Ravi and Sauvik, Mr. Majumdar, the August gathering here of not just Indian academia but also a large number of international academia. Let me first welcome you all on behalf of the FIKI Higher Education Committee to this 17th Higher Education Summit. Sir, it's, it's indeed a great feeling today uh, because we're meeting all uh, our academic friends from India and abroad in person. Over the last two years, we've seen each other's faces more online than offline. And it's great to see all of you in such large numbers and many more still coming in on this wonderful day when we celebrate uh, not just the 75th anniversary of Indian independence, but also looking forward to how we are going to celebrate 100 years of Indian independence. I need not reiterate the position of India on the global map. I think the President of FIKI has already said a lot about it. But since the last two years through the pandemic, when you know things were negative, we all were low in our own personal lives as well as professional lives and lives of our institutions, uh, we didn't know what we were preparing our students for. Uh, the delivery of education did change and we were preparing our students to be employable but the kind of uncertainty and vulnerability and VUCA that we all were facing, we really didn't know what kind of jobs uh, students would get, not just in India but anywhere in the world. But while all this was happening, the world was looking at India. India has proven itself as a leader when in the crisis of pandemic, it is not, it, India did not just take care of its own citizens, but also the citizens of the world by providing two vaccines, the Covaxin and Covishield. I think this brought India at the center of discussions on, in the global scenario. Again, the G20, uh, which we are going to host next year, will also, is also a proof of India being there. In the education sector too, we have come a long way in the last 75 years. The earlier years were of course focused on growth and massification of education and now here we are discussing internationalization, quality and benchmarking. While we do want to increase our gross enrollment ratio as Mr. Sanjeev just said to what it is in the global order, we also want to provide quality education to our young students. And while we want to provide quality education to our young students, we also would like to provide quality education to students from all the countries that are represented here. And I think here India is, is at a great advantage. It is at a great advantage because many of you know that the top CEOs or the CEOs of top companies are of Indian origin, which means when they got educated here in India several years ago, they did undergo quality education and therefore they are there where they are. Likewise, we would definitely like to educate students who come from your countries. Today, as Mr. Sanjeev said, the ratio is very skewed. Just about 49,000 students, foreign students studying in India as against more than uh, 800,000 stu Indian students studying abroad, primarily in the developed countries. But Sanjeevji and uh, Sarkarji, we see a lot of curiosity amongst foreign academicians who keep coming to our university campuses wanting to know more about Indian education. And I'm very glad that the ministry and the UGC has taken right decisions as a fallout of the national education policy in announcing dual and joint degrees. And I think this will definitely bring in, you know, more and more foreign students to India. Sometimes I wonder why do we want foreign students uh, studying in Indian classrooms? Is it like other countries where we are looking at the commercial angle? Or is it just a number game? Because the other country has 200,000 students and therefore we want to increase ours from 49,000 to say 500,000. Uh, I think the Indian history goes a long way. Thousands of years ago when Takshashila, Nalanda, Vikramshila attracted foreign students and foreign scholars, it certainly wasn't for the number. It was more to provide that knowledge, provide the good education to build capacity in those countries. And I think even today, when we look at foreign students, it, it's with this angle that our Indian universities would like to contribute to capacity building of students coming from your countries. It is also the diversity angle that we look at. 
that when we have foreign students sitting in our classrooms, the kind of diverse discussions that take place in our classrooms is phenomenal because we know that when we prepare our students, it's not just to work in our country, but to help other build other countries as well. And I think with this angle of internationalization, India has a great advantage and therefore we decided that the theme of this conference would be how India can be a global destination for higher education. Over the next two days, sir, we have excellent speakers, we have excellent themes that we will discuss and deliberate and certainly create a white paper that we will submit to the ministry. I'm also glad that many of our reports and discussions that we had with Dr. Kasturi Rangan, who was the chairperson of NEP, we see those reports being reflected in the national education policy today. I only hope that this two years conference will be, will be really an inspiring conference for all the academicians who are sitting here. I'm sure there will be a lot of networks and dialogues that will take place today with, from our, with our Indian partners as well as foreign partners and I'm sure the deliberations over the next two days will certainly find policies uh, coming out from the, uh, from the UGC and the Ministry of HRD. With these few words, I once again welcome all of you to this wonderful session today at the inaugural session as well as over the, uh, you know, have inspiring sessions over the next two days. I must thank the Honourable Minister, sir. Uh, that you accepted to come here in spite of your busy schedule and I've heard him speak at one of the other conferences that the Ministry of Commerce had hosted and he gives a wonderful dialogue especially on this very subject. I'm also thankful Sumit for you to have accepted this invitation as an industry partner and I'm sure you will bring out that angle of what industry requires from educationists like us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, ma'am, for setting the tone of the summit with your insightful theme address. And ladies and gentlemen, today we are delighted to have with us Mr. Sumit Joshi. He is the Vice Chairman and Managing Director, South Asia for Signify Innovations India. Mr. Sumit Joshi brings more than 19 years of experience in marketing and business leadership roles. Over his career, he has led global multi-million dollar KPIS projects, leading multicultural teams across various geographies and functions. He is a strong people leader and focuses on growing and developing both business and people in synergy. And ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together to welcome Mr. Sumit Joshi for the special address. Honorable Minister of State um, of Edu um, Honorable Minister of State for Education Dr. Subhash Sarkar, dignitaries on dais, international delegates uh, and all August gathering we have here. Very good morning. I am privileged and humbled to be invited to speak at this conference today. The topic about higher education is very, very close to my heart. And I was zapped to know the number of 49,000 of international students which come to India versus 800,000 of Indian students which go out. And Sanjeev coined the brilliant term, balance of students. This is really not in balance. Over the last 25 years, after getting educated in Indian system, I worked across different international and Indian MNCs in different sectors, in different geographies. And I have seen what benefit, what value I bring to the table, and I'm sure Sanjeev will agree with me, which is imbibed in all of us because of a very, very robust Indian education system. So this topic is very, very close to my heart. And Sanjeev said that it's a time for India. And I'm going to talk about advantage which we have to really make that difference and make India a preferred destination for higher education. Few years back, there was a Bollywood song which depicted the feeling um, uh, which we Indians had and we have a lot of students here. It went like, Apna time aega. Apna time aega. And I'm saying, Apna time aega. Our time will not come, it is coming. It has come. 
and there are three distinct advantages which we have in India. The first one, which everybody alluded to, was the economy which we have. We have the fastest growing economy and IMF, World Bank, ADB are predicting that in next few years, India will continue to be the fastest growing economy. If we have to have a sector of higher education, you cannot build that sector when the economy is not doing well. You can only build that sector if you are able to give opportunities for students who are going to be graduating or post-graduating to come in a workforce. And that is working for us. That's our advantage number one. There is a second advantage which we have. We are having amazing demographic dividend with us. We are the youngest country. In next few years, India will have digitally enabled, tech savvy, English speaking population who is going to consume like never before. Any company which has the global vision and wants to create an impact globally understands the value which India has in the overall uh, game which they have. And not only from a market standpoint, but also the value which Indian talent brings in. If it's going to be a big market, if somebody who's educated in India understand what it takes to win in India, understand those nuances, is definitely going to be an asset for any multinational company. That's our second advantage. We are the biggest market for the world and the biggest democracy. The third advantage which we have, none of this will happen if we are not having a system in place to really leapfrog. And I must say that last seven years, eight years we have seen that we are led by a very, very dynamic, visionary leadership which we have under our Honorable Prime Minister. And we have come up with multiple initiatives. Make in India, for example. Make in India for the world. Study in India. I'm, I've also seen, uh, you know, national education policy which got released. Startup India. 75,000 startups. 100 of them are already unicorn status. The biggest edtech startup for the world is coming out of India. So very clearly, big three advantages which India has, which we need to leverage to make change in this balance of student. I really love this term. You know, 49,000 versus 800,000. That is just not happening. That's not where we deserve to be. So while all these advantages are there, in next two days, I also ask myself, what do we need to do to really attract international students? To make those 300 million students or 250 million students who are going to come into college education, what do we need to do which is going to make us unique? Every company when they are making products, nobody better than uh, you know Sanjeev and his company to tell us that we need to have a brand which is differentiated. We need to offer something which is unique. So I ask myself, what do we have unique to offer? And I say, over we have, you know, the ethos, Indian ethos, Indian principle, Indian values, which are time tested. Takshila, Nalanda, they were the world universities centuries ago. Can we go back to what we have which is intrinsic to India? Our values, our ethos. Dr. Vidya spoke about, you know, 50 plus CEOs globally are India born CEOs managing more than a trillion dollar revenue. A lot of them have had their higher education from outside, but they themselves say that the reason why they are able to get to that roles is because of the strong foundation which they got in their Indian education system. It taught them work ethic, hard work, hope, optimism, wanting to do something. The kind of diversity which we see when we grow up. And I think that makes them best suited to manage uncertainties which the world is seeing. To give that compassionate leadership, collaborate with multilingual, multi-regional teams which are spread across the world. They are best suited for that because they have grown, grown up like that. So can we go back and create a system which is based on our ethos, our principles. Second idea, can we really take our Indian art 
Indian music, Indian dance, Indian culinary skills, science, wellness, yoga, can we take them to the world much more than what we are doing today? Can we create those centers of excellence where we are able to get people and learn something which is very, very Indian? Can we promote more social entrepreneurship than only commercial entrepreneurship? Giving back to the society, but also making profits, having that balance. World needs it. Can we create that unique proposition for us? Can we teach the world how do we innovate in a resource-constrained environment? Our Mangalan sir costed one-tenth of what normal other exploration missions costed. We went to cellular uh, uh, you know, telephony directly. 40% of digital payments are happening in the world, are happening in India. And I am witness to what India can do. We produced the cheapest and the best quality LED lamp in the world. The transformation which India has seen from energy guzzling lamps to energy saving LED lamps is unequivocal, better than anywhere else. Can we create a program which actually teaches people to innovate in a resource constrained environment as well? Now, while I'm saying that, of course, we need to modernize. It goes without saying. Of course, we need to have world-class facilities. Of course, we need to do all of that to attract. We also need much more industry participation. Sanjeev alluded to it. But I think there are so many SMEs and MSMEs which need help, which need hand-holding for innovation and R&D. Can academia and industry come together to really put that platform where students are able to understand real-world problems, work in the field, apply those theoretical concepts, adapt them, and work and also help our SMEs and MSMEs to get better and be competitive. I also think that if we have to reach that dream, we also need to, we also need to have much higher participation of private sector, much bigger in, uh, investment of, uh, in, in private sector. And I'm sure regulators and policymakers would be thinking in terms of what do we need to do to make private sector in education at much higher level. We need to construct those real world-class universities. As I said, apna time aagaya, our time is here. And I'm sure next two days, all of you will share your thoughts, brainstorm, and come back with something which is going to be tangible for us as a country to move forward. Again, thank you very much for inviting me here, and I really enjoyed, uh, uh, you know, speaking. And thank you, and all the very best. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for your motivating address. And I'm sure everyone present here today seconds your sentiments on uh, that our time has come. And ladies and gentlemen, now for the release of the FIKI EY report, I would like to invite on stage Mr. Amitabh Jingan, partner EY Parthenol, and Dr. Ventika Toma, partner EY Parthenol, to kindly join us on the stage. As I request the Honorable Chief Guest, the Honorable Minister, to kindly do the honors of releasing the FIKI EY report, Higher Education in India, Vision 2047. And ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together on the release of the FIKI EY report, Higher Education in India, Vision 2047. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for doing the honours. <coughs> Thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to have amongst us the luminary presence of Dr. Subhash Sarkar, the Honorable Minister of State for Education, Government of India. And I have the proud privilege in inviting for the inaugural address the Honorable Minister of State for Education, Dr. Subhash Sarkar. Let's put our hands together to welcome him.
गुड मॉर्निंग शुभ प्रभात शुभ प्रभातम इन आवर ट्रेडिशनल वेलकम वर्ड इज नमस्कार नमस्ते शत्सियाकाल खुरुम जारी वनक्कम नमस्कारम वोम ग्रीटिंग्स टू ऑल ऑन द डायस मिस्टर संजीव मेहता President Fiki and CEO and MD Hindustan Unilever Limited, Dr. Bidda Yara Dekar, Chair Fiki Higher Education Committee and Pro Chancellor Symbiosis International University, Mr. Sumit Joshi, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, South Asia for Signify Innovation. India this is also formerly Philips Lighting India Limited Mr Ravi Panchanathan co-chair Fiki Higher Education Committee and managing director and CEO Manipal Global Foundation Services Professor Shovik Bhattacharya co-chair Fiki Higher Education Committee and vice chancellor Bits Pilani Manav Majumdar, Deputy Secretary General, Fiki. Distinguished guests, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. Dear all, I am glad to be here at this 17th Fiki Higher Education Summit 2022. I would like to start my speech by sharing a sloka with you all. विद्वान प्रशस्यते लोके विद्वान षडवत्र गौरवम विद्वया लभते शर्वो विद्वया षडवत्र पूज्यते इट मीन्स दैट नॉलेज इज एक्सटोल्ड बाई एवरी वन नॉलेज इज कंसिडर्ड ग्रेट एवरीवेयर वन कैन अचीव एवरीथिंग विद द हेल्प ऑफ नॉलेज and a knowledgeable person is respected everywhere dear friends it gives me immense pleasure to be present amongst all of you education experts and thinkers and stir the discussion on global destination of higher education advantage india i would like to start my sharing insights into the ancient indian knowledge system my dear friends the indian knowledge system grew over the ages with the contribution of teachers who helped students to evolve by inculcating human values this is very important for the whole world and the sustainable development knowledge and skills in ancient india while pursuing education in various disciplines like history the art of debate law medicine etc the emphasis was not only on the outer dimensions of the discipline but also on enriching the inner dimensions of the personality they are all we have a long history of teaching and learning and some of the milestone institutions of learning in ancient india were takshashila nalanda vallabhi sharada peet pushpagiri vihara udantapuri vikramashila somapura mahavihara vikrampur vihara jagaddala mahavihara and many more i would like to talk about vallabhi vidyapeet it was founded by the maitraka dynasty of shaurastra in 600 ad the maitraka dynasty ruled shaurastra from 475 to 776 ad with their capital in vallabhi which is now bhavnagar in gujarat during its golden days it was considered to be parallel to nalanda university 
the university taught science wisdom theology economics accounting law agriculture etc graduates of vallabhi vidyapeeth were employed by the king to assist the government it was like the campus placement of those times even many foreign travelers came to india and made observation about us i would quote few of them were huen sang 632 to 645 ad huen sang was one of india's most well known visitors coming from china searching from for buddhist beliefs and practices his memories provide a wealth of knowledge on india's political social and religious structures and he has been dubbed as the prince of pilgrims he journeyed through the deccans orisha and bengal studying at the university of nalanda his tales represent what ancient india have been like because he lived there for 14 years italis marco polo 1288 to 1292 ad the venetian traveler marco polo is the most well known traveler he has visited india twice in 1287 to 88 and 1291 to 92 many historians believe that the dates and travels he mentions are correct and particular even there are few famous examples of people who were foreigners but they made an impact in india especially in the education system i would mention the name of henry vivian Dilajio He was a teacher at Hindu College in Calcutta in the 1820s he attended David Drummond's Dhuramtalla Academy School he acquired the following understanding of life in Drummond's Academy India is his motherland everyone in this country is his kindred soul community living is nobler than isolated life this is the message from india <laughs> rationalism is a much greater treasure than the old custom he promoted radical ideas and encouraged his pupils to question all authority he was a poet philosopher and teacher he also launched the young bengal young bengal movement his student attack tradition and custom demanded education for women and campaigned for the freedom of thought and expression and the that their attacking on the custom custom means it was for this time for that time which developed in india but it was not our traditional custom we are always for the women empowerment in our ancient india we should recall all our women empowered names gargi maitri and all so many so many by following the vision of our ancestors and under the dynamic leadership of honorable prime minister sri narendra modi ji the national education policy 2020 envisions an education system rooted in indian ethos that contributes directly to transforming india dear friends nep 2020 facilitates the inclusion of transformative curricula that aim for the holistic development of learners equipping them with the key 21st century skills enhancing essential learning and critical thinking and placing greater focus on experiential learning thereby providing a holistic approach to the learning process it is another message for the whole world 
that we can provide holistic education. Dear all, as our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji said, the new education policy will show the seeds for starting a new era and will give a new direction to 21st century India. My dear friends, in the last few years, India has firmly established itself on the global radar. Just now we have heard it from Sri Shumit Joshi also. With countries across the world aiming for a strong and sustained presence here, fundamentals of the Indian economy are strong and stable and we are well on the path of the development. Our country has a critical mass of skilled English-speaking knowledge workers, especially in the technology and science disciplines. We have a well-functioning democracy, and our domestic market is one of the world's largest. Our diaspora abroad is impressive and helps create valuable knowledge linkage and networks. In addition, the development of the ICT sector and recent years has been remarkable. As a nation of young people, India has been bestowed with a demographic advantage. This is very important. Out of a population of above 1.31 billion, of which almost 50% in the age group of 15 and 59 years, which is usually treated as the working age population. This is very interesting and this is very powerful message from India. My dear friends, India is expected to be the fastest growing economy touching a GDP of USD 10 trillion by 2030 and one of the youngest nations in the world with a median age of 32. Projections show that our country would require a gross incremental workforce of 250 million by 2030. Hence, our government is committed to transforming India into a global education hub and attracting international students. The ambitious study in India program launched by the government is a great step in this direction. Through this program, the government proposes to attract international students from 35 focus countries. This is initial. The number will be increased in later on, definitely. As the government of the day, we shall tirelessly strive to enable our youth, empower them and provide them with strong fundamentals that shall gear them up for the challenges of the new country. My dear friends, the National Education Policy 2020 has laid down emphasis on creating a multidisciplinary education with an underlying focus on promoting liberal education across undergraduates. The policy has focused on moving towards institutional and faculty autonomy, revival and renewal of public investment in higher education, coexistence of public and private higher education institutions on equitable terms to promote research, credit-based system of curricular composition for different levels of qualifications and applications of enabling technology to plan, design and deliver the 21st century education. Dear friends, and program in subject such as Indology, Indian languages, Ayush system of medicine, yoga, arts, music, history, culture, and modern India, internationally relevant curricula in the science, social sciences, and beyond. Meaningful opportunities for social engagement, quality residential facilities, and on-campus support 
etc will be fostered to attain this goal of global quality standards attract greater numbers of international students and achieve the goal of internationalization at home in this line an international students office at each higher educational institute hosting foreign students is being set up to coordinate all matters relating to welcoming and supporting students arriving from abroad dear friends research and teaching collaborations and faculty and student exchange with huge quality foreign institutions will be facilitated and relevant mutually beneficial moves with foreign countries will be facilitated more and more this is the message from our government dear friends india is among the highest contributors to students wanting to study in other countries but as satellite campuses are growing and with the national education policy international institutions will make india their home will prestigious india indian institutions are looking to set up offshore campuses this is both side messages will be given i and that has work has already been started i would also like to highlight that there is a demand for student mobility not just in the form of outgoing students but even in the form of incoming students india is a popular study destination for students from sark central asian countries and africa dear friends all of these shows that education has become more internationalized and the demand for quality education goes beyond geographies <clears throat> my dear friends our government has taken several key initiatives to streamline the higher education sector and bring in this requisite forms to develop a culture of ranking in india the ministry of education is successfully running the national institutional ranking framework that is nirf suited to the local condition circumstances and requirements nirf has already completed seven successive years of ranking the indigenously developed mooks platform called swam is developed to emphasize self learning and increase access equity and quality the ministry of education has launched a faculty development program this is very important message to the whole education society in the world this development program in the form of the leadership for academician program that is leap and the annual refresher program in teaching that is arpit while leap provides the senior faculty an opportunity to develop the required leadership and managerial skills and understanding the cope with the complexity and changes of governance in higher education institutions whereas arpit program is training program for the faculty members to improve upon their pedagogical skills our government is successfully running a global initiative of academic network gian program that is aimed at tapping the talent pool of foreign scientists and entrepreneurs to encourage their engagement with the institutes of higher education in india so as to augment the country's existing academic resources accelerate the pace of quality reform and elevate india's scientific and technological capacity to global excellence <coughs> the ugc regulations academic collaboration between india and foreign higher educations 
have institutions to offer twinning, joint degree and dual degree program. That is 2020 is a major step in promoting internationalization of higher education. The academic bank of credit system recently launched by the government will provide every student the facility to open unique in digital form. The new ABC system will enable students by bringing seamless vertical and horizontal mobility for them across, please, sorry. The new ABC system will enable students by bringing seamless vertical and horizontal mobility for them across programs and institutions to improve the quality of state universities. This is also very important. The central government has been providing financial assistance under Rastriyo Uchchatara Shiksha Abhijan, which is popularly known as, as Rusha scheme to all the state governments. Our Ministry of Education is working closely with the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship to develop a comprehensive framework for apprenticeship program that will provide hands-on training to the graduates and diploma holders. Some of the initiatives to promote research, innovation and entrepreneurship. Yes, auto innovation mission started by the government is to promote a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship and serve as a platform for the promotion of world-class innovation hubs, grand, grand challenges, startup businesses and other self-employment activities, particularly in technology-driven areas. The government has established the Prime Minister's Science, Technology and Innovation Council, which is known as PMSTIAC, which is an overarching body to assess the status of specific s and domains, comprehend challenges, formulate immediate, mid and long term interventions and present a road map on the, to the Prime Minister. The, to the development of science and technology has launched a national initiative for developing and harnessing innovation that is NIDHI which is an umbrella program for nurturing ideas and innovations with the objectives to build a strong ecosystem for nurturing innovation and startups. In the country, the Government of India launched a Start of India Action Plan that offers support as tax exemption, legal support in patent filing, credit guarantee scheme, etc. If you are prepared to think big and act on time with conviction, you will be rewarded. My dear friends, our basic education system is strong and values are rooted in traditional systems. That is why in recent times we have seen the emergence of many Indian educated graduates as the leader of the top companies in the world. For instance, see Shundar Pichai got his basic education from IIT Kharagpur. And then when to become CEO of Google, even Sri Shota Nadella received his graduation degree from Monipal Institute of Technology. And then went to lead Microsoft. I am fairly optimistic 
that with the serious intent of the government and the support from the private sector, we shall be able to successfully deliver on the challenges that lie ahead of us and steer the country towards greater heights and success. I look forward to receive suggestions from FIKI based on the deliberation that take place over the next two days. I would like to quote the former President of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. All of us do not have equal talent, but all of us have an equal opportunity to develop our talents. In this regard, I would like to urge you to create a lot of opportunities for common people in the field of education, skill development and entrepreneurship so that it immediately contributes towards Atmanirvar Bharat as a take-home message. I would like to place a special responsibility on all of you. As you all are experts in the field of education. You all must act as ambassadors of Brand India and tell the world about the kind of achievements we have made in the field of education. You can talk about Indian knowledge systems through different media and spread the world about ancient wisdom. This is very, very important. I am reminded of few lines in Hindi from our source of inspiration and former Prime Minister Bharat Ratno Sri Atal Bihari Bajpayee Badhai aati hai aaye Ghire pralai ki ghor ghataye Pao ke niche angare Seer par barse yedi jalaye Nijo haato mein haste haste aag laga kar jalna hoga Kadam mila kar jalna hoga My dear friends, under the dynamic leadership power of our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji Our dreams have made delivery since 2014 and scale by scale my dear friends, India assumed the presidency of G20 yesterday and together we shall tell the world story of new India. And just now on the dais, I was thinking that India will not host only for the higher education. The days are not too far. India will be host of also the school education and India will be called to the other developed countries to establish their education in the school education and the kids education because of our because of our talent for giving for imparting holistic education to the child we have that kind of power i wish this event a huge success and to each one of you i extend my wishes for your future endeavors in the field of education especially thank you all bharat mata ki chai Thank you very much indeed, sir, for your inspiring address and motivating us with your august presence. Ladies and gentlemen, let's once again put our hands together for the Honorable Minister for sparing his valuable time, inspiring all of us with those motivational address. Thank you very much indeed, sir. And now, ladies and gentlemen, may I invite Mr. Ravi Panchanandan, the co-chair, Fiki Higher Education Committee and Managing Director and CEO, Manipal Global Education services to kindly close the proceedings of the inaugural session with few words of thanks. Over to you, sir. Very good morning to everybody.
indeed it's really difficult to do justice after such great sessions uh, what a lovely passionate address by the honorable minister so big round of applause to the minister thank you so much sir i think uh, on behalf of all of us uh, not just fiki but all of us here uh, thank you for nep 2020 uh, and the follow up that you have planned so that any nep 2020 is implemented we all agree with the ethos and the approach of the prime minister see modi ji where you say that look this nep 2020 will probably be the seed that has been sown today and 2047 when we celebrate our centenary year of independence that would really be the year when a lot of these things over a period of time will actually see the light of the day and will actually fructify it's also important to education has always been a pillar uh, of development socio economic development and it's often said that if you get education right automatically the rest of the things around uh, the education will definitely follow 2047 is near it's just 25 years away 75 years we've actually spent in putting a structure together a lot of our people within india outside of india have benefited in during these 75 years and have taken to taken india to where it is today the next 25 years is very very crucial and i empath and i echo uh, the sentiment that our time has actually come this is india's time this is india's moment apna time is right now and all of us should join hands to make sure that we don't let this particular train slip away and we miss this opportunity i also thank uh, our uh, president uh, mr sanjeev mehta for his address i thank uh, sumit for thank you for some of the good words and some of the uh, you know the way you charged up the entire audience out here uh, i think it's it's like our chair said uh, the fiki chair vidya said i just want to spend 30 seconds on the theme for this particular fiki con conclave global destination for higher education advantage india so there are two parts to it there is there is this thing called global education and global destination for education and the second part is advantage india this is the time for india to make sure that we go from 50000 to 1 million over the next 15 to 20 years so the theme is very aspirational it talks it it signifies aspiration it signifies what as as all of us what what is the goal that we want to achieve so in that sense it's future future protected it's future directional and i think if we can do justice over the next two days uh, we will see a lot of deliberation a lot of uh, things that we will do over the next two days culminating in the white paper which will stand in us in good stead over the years to come last but not the least while nep 2020 as a policy is already there uh, there are initiatives that the government of india has as thought of they are getting rolled out as we speak but i think it's it's very important to take on board that like our honorable minister said saath chalna padega saath nibhana padega i think it's important that industry academia and the government together the triage of industry academia and government have to work very closely together to ensure that we don't we leave no stone unturned and the three of us together I don't think we can either do without we we can't do without any of these three triage all three of them have to come together to make this vision to, to, to make this dream a reality so thank you very much thanks a lot to all of you for uh, coming over on behalf of fiki and we got a lot of partners who I thought I would read out the name today but uh, due to paucity of time thanks for all the sponsorship uh, we will do it towards the end of the end of the conclave after two days uh, so all the very best and uh, there's an exhibition stall outside which we are going to move after this event uh, lovely stalls have been put up do spend time there and encourage your teams to uh, see what education has in store uh, as we go along on our path 2047 thank you very much thank you everybody have a great day
Thank you very much indeed, sir. And ladies and gentlemen, I once again take this opportunity to thank our Honorable Chief Guest, Honorable Minister, and other distinguished dignitaries for sparing their valuable time and gracing this occasion and motivating each one of us with the inspirational addresses. And now I would request our Honorable Minister and dignitaries on the days to kindly do the honors of inaugurating the exhibition. We would request you to kindly proceed towards the exhibition area which is right across the inaugural hall. And ladies and gentlemen, let's once again have a huge round of applause thanking the Honourable Minister for being here with us today. And may I request everybody to kindly remain seated. First the Honourable Minister, wait for the Honourable Minister to leave the hall and arrive at the exhibition area, requesting everybody to leave the aisle passages clear. The middle aisle passage to kindly be left clear. Everybody else to kindly remain seated in their seats. The aisle passages to be left clear, please. And ladies... We should come. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. So this way, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get the 